We'll call. Thank you so much. Mr. Corey Jackson. What's Mr. Jackson going to testify to? Your Honor, he is um, a young man. How many witnesses do you have, Mr. Steele? Six, Your Honor. Okay, and what's, what's the next witness going to testify to? Your Honor, he's a young man. He's just turned 15 years of age. He met Mr. Williams when he was eight years of age. He was selling CDs in the, um, in the uh, perimeter mall. Mr. Williams, um, he was in poverty. He's from Jackson, Mississippi. His, his family's here as well in your courtroom. Mr. Williams explained to him that... Hang tight, hang tight, hang tight, hang tight, hang tight. Mr. Seal, if, you're, if, if you, it is your goal to, to, um, to establish that Mr. Williams has significant ties in the community, I believe that you've established that uh, to the court's satisfaction. Uh, not that I don't want to hear your witnesses, but um, it, it's, it's cumulative at this point in time. I mean, if that's, the, if that's the purpose of these next witnesses, unless they go to some other bond factor, you know, I'm, I'm kind of really at this point in time, I'm not not really interested in hearing from him at this point. Well, he goes to more to a different factor, Your Honor. And what is that? Danger to the community, which is what I thought the state is arguing. Okay, all right. If he's going to danger the community, all right. Come on up, young man. Please approach the witness stand once you get there. If you'd be so kind, turn face deputy tall and be sworn as a witness. Well, I'll hold the before for you. Okay, go ahead. You ready to run here? You swear in front of the testimony, are you going to quote the truth, the whole truth, and number of the truth? Yes, sir. You can take a seat. State and spell your first and last name. Corey Jackson, C O R E Y J A C K S O N. Good afternoon, Mr. Jackson. And thank you. Good afternoon to you. Um, it's up to the court. And it's also up to you if you want to take off your mask with the Honorable Court's permission. If you want to keep it on, you absolutely keep it on. Okay. Uh, your choice, young man. I'd like to take it off then. Uh, Mr. Jackson, introduce yourself to the court. Tell the court what you do. Well, um, I'm Corey Jackson. I'm a recording artist, motivational speaker, and actor. And um, are you in school? Yes, sir. What grade are you in? I'm in the 11th as of right now. And you're 15 in the 11th grade? Yes, sir. How did you do that? Um, well, I'm homeschooled and I stay up on my studies and I uh, work on that. Do you remember um, meeting a gentleman named Mr. Jeffrey Williams? Most definitely, yes, sir. Do you see him on this Honorable Court's Zoom screen? Yes, sir. And how did you meet Mr. Williams? Um, well, the first time I ever met him was in the mall. It was in Cumberland Mall. It, um, I was probably eight or nine at the time. I had first met him with my music, and I approached him, and I didn't know who he was. But um, later on that day, after I had met him, I found out um, who he was as far as an artist, and I found out more about him. And then when I really um, met him, and we made the connection, made the bond, was later on um, when I was like 10 or 11 years old at the time. And um, did Mr. Were you in? I, I know it's a personal, but were you in poverty at that time? If you know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. I understand what you mean. And where were you living at that time? Um, well, I'm from Jackson, Mississippi, originally. So um, down there is called Cornwell Street, Shady Oaks, Christian Brotherhood. And is your father in the courtroom? Yes, sir. And other family members? Um, yes, sir. Okay. Tell this honorable court if Mr. Williams ever took you to where he was raised on Cleveland Avenue. Yes, sir, he has. And tell the court what you learned from that and what the purpose was. Well, at the time, um, he took me there because I always expressed to him how at me being at such a young age and being able to achieve what I have and have the knowledge that I do have, I want to, that's why I started Motivational Speaking, because I want to inspire the youth and show them that anything is possible because you can look at somebody while they're older and you say, oh, that's good, they're doing it, but now you have an example that's your age and close, and close to you in age that's showing you that it's possible. And Mr. Williams, he showed me, he took me to where he was from. 
And he showed me where he came from. He showed me the property that he lived in. And he told me, you know, he told me a saying, each one teach one, which is something by, that he lives by. And he has also helped instill in me that I live by now, each one teach one. And he told me whatever knowledge you have, you have to be able to spread it because this is who you are trying to inspire and show them that they can become successful. So that is what he took me there for and to show me how he was able to achieve what he has and where he comes from. And, and what I have to do if I want to motivate more young people like And tell the Honorable Court whether you have gone across our country talking to other students, people your age and younger at schools. Yes, sir, I have. I've um, did different things like different school tours and doing motivational speeches for different organizations like the Boys and Girls Club and um, different things of that nature and different youth centers, detention centers, of course, schools. Yes, sir, I have. And has Mr. Williams uh, put upon you the duty that you have to always be positive and try to get other people not to do crime? Yes, sir, he has, and he has always motivated me in that goal and that mission. He has always um, showed me that path and always deterred me from anything that could be negative or affect me in a negative way. He always deterred me from that and showed me the right way and showed me a positive way to do anything I have going on. Has Mr. Williams taken you on tour with him, with your family's permission to take in your family? Yes, sir, he has. And if you can remember, what are some of the places that you went with Mr. Williams? Uh, Atlanta, Georgia, um, Los Angeles, California, St. Louis, Chicago, New York. Uh, I've been to New Orleans with them before, many different places, uh, Tampa, and some more places. It's been a lot. Houston, Texas? Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas. Okay. And have you been on stage with Mr. Williams and talking to people about all positive motivating in a positive direction? Well, yes, sir, I have been on stage with them and we have also made motivational videos with motivational messages. And when you go to schools, is that with Mr. Williams' request? Yes, sir. And what do you tell the other children when you're there? Well, first I speak on my five keys to success, which are hard work, determination, dedication, motivation, and ambition. And I show them how you can utilize if you are using if you are utilizing these five keys to success, how you yourself can become successful. And that is also what he helps and he sponsors me with. And when I go through the schools, I also speak on things that aren't at this stage in life taught because while you're in school, you're going off of your report card. But when you get out of school, you're going to go off your credit report. And that's why I also um, teach and speak on financial literacy. Mr. Jackson. Does, did you ever have conversations with Mr. Williams about your, um, the, the way you are outlooked and it has to be positive as opposed to some people look at him with the name, quote, young thug. Does he ever explain to you that not to do that? Well, um, actually, we have had conversations, and he has been very vocal about not liking the image that is associated with the name Young Thug, because whenever you picture that, you assume, you know, he's a thug. And that's why we have talked, he has discussed with me how he would like to reevaluate and re-image, reshape his image into um, his name, Jeffrey, and how he would like to go forth with that being his name, and that's what people associate with him, Jeffrey, instead of the image of a Young Thug. Is it Mr. Williams' communications with you that he wishes that people do not do drugs or alcohol or be a danger to the community? Yes, sir. He has expressed that to me, and he has also expressed that to many others. And does he use you as a lightning rod to express it to other people? Yes, sir. He has, and he still does. What is YS? Do you, are you a member of YSL? Um, well, I'm not signed to the label on papers. What is YSL to you? Well, to me, YSL is a family. To me, YSL is, ever since I first met him, it's been all love, all respect, and it has been pure. And for me, um, when we spoke on it, other than, you know, the name of the label, Young Stoner Life Records, um, I told him my YSL means Young Successful Life because that's something that he has created. He is a young successful man himself. But also, he is helping more young men and young women have successful lives, such as myself, for example. And that's why 
my YSL stands for Young Successful Lives because that is what he has done and that is what he is now creating and showing and putting into the community. Sir, has Mr. Williams' tutoring and guidance to you taken you out of poverty and your family? Yes, sir, it has. Okay. Has Mr. Williams ever asked you for a nickel? No, sir. He has never asked for no profit or proceeds from anything that he has helped contribute with. Never. Your Honor, with the court's permission, Ms. Edwards has a very short video that relates to Mr. Um, Jackson. Okay. What's it for? I mean, he's testified here, so it's kind of like so. It'll explain um, background. I don't see the dangerousness in this, Mr. Steele. I mean, I, he's he certainly. He buttresses again what I have indicated earlier, which is he has significant ties. He's helped a number of people in the community. I, I'm, I, but I don't see the danger of the community that you promised me from this te from the testimony. He's the I'll opposite. Proffer. I think that my promise is good. Mr. Jackson is saying that the entirety of Mr. Williams' desires is that people do not commit crime, do drugs, do violence, uh -huh. and to stay in school. That is, that pinpoints, the whole Daniel community is risk of crime, risk of committing crime. He's doing the exact, he's diamet, Mr. Williams through, and along with Mr. Jackson, diametrically opposed. Okay, all right. All right, um, but what, this video, you want to show me how long is it? Two minutes. And what's it going to show me? It'll show you Mr. Jackson on The Ellen Show. It'll show him on CNN. It'll show him interacting with Mr. Williams, interacting at schools, just to give you an idea of how he, this message is, is all across I, I the country. I think he's testified that more significantly. I mean, I'll accept your, the video as, uh, as proof of that, further proof of that particular issue, but I think um, Mr. Jackson here has well articulated that issue. Okay. Okay. Then I have no other questions for Ms. I want to thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you, sir, and thank you, Your Honor, for allowing me the time to come and speak. Oh, you're very welcome, young man. Any, any questions, Mr. Geary? No, sir. All right, young man, you can step down and seat in the gallery if you like.